We move along now to our co-featured fight of the evening. It is a WBA middleweight championship fight featuring Eris Lande Lara defending the championship against Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Dream was the beginning song for Spike O'Sullivan, and that really sort of surmises what this evening is all about for him. No stranger to boxing here in the United States. He's fought 15 times here in the States. Still lives in his native Ireland, of course, but he has fought in Boston for the most part. So very familiar with everything here and how all the, everything works here. He's not at all awed by this situation. Although this crowd, I would have to think, gets anybody's attention. He's a fighter who has beaten many fighters on his own level or below. He has had problems when he has stepped up in class against Jaime Mangaya, uh, BJ Saunders, uh, David Lemieux, Chris Eubank Jr. He's failed at those big moments. Tonight he wants to change that, beat a fighter that is a world-renowned fighter and get a version of the middleweight championship to boot. Yeah, those were his only four losses. Other than that, 31 wins, 21 knockouts. Very confident, of course, coming in here. I mean, he figures that Lara, at 39 years of age, has run his course as well. But of course, Spike, at 37 years of age, has been around the track more than a couple of times as well. Big personality, though, very popular all over Ireland, very popular in Boston. Yeah, as you mentioned, he's run in Boston a number of times uh, and, and has built a following there as well. You're looking at Aris Lani Lara. If it feels like he's been around forever, I believe he has, in fact, been around forever. Record of 28, 3 and 3, 60 knockouts along the way. When he first started, he was strictly a boxer, really not, not a guy that went in there looking for a knockout. If it happened, it happened. But most recently, he's been a little bit more of a flat footed guy, and his power with that has increased somewhat. He thinks he can get his man out of there tonight. 39 years of age, 13 years as a pro since coming to the United States from his native Cuba. Was very talented, very well-known fighter in Cuba. And Barry, the reason that this man has been in the ring forever, uh, and I can see him go for another five more years. God knows how, how old he'll be then. Um, it's because of his boxing abilities. He is a great slick boxer. And like you mentioned, yeah, he's sitting down more of his and his punches, but still, he's really, uh, he'll still make you miss. He's a guy that knows how to use the ring really well. Lara here, and, and another fighter that's fought the who's who's in its weight class. Let's take a look at the numbers for this matchup. Now this is Lara's second fight at middleweight, and this is by one quarter of a pound, the most he's weighed in for a fight. Uh, O'Sullivan at age 37 says he's happy to fight someone that's a little older than him, but will he be happy having to reach disadvantage uh, that he's giving away to Lara? You see a huge reach disadvantage, and that may help Lara keep him on the outside. All right, let's take you back to the center of the ring for the introduction of the fighters in this, our semi-main event here again, is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, Premier Boxing Champions presents the first of our world title attractions brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. This bout is presented in association with Murphy's Boxing. 
and it is sanctioned by the WBA, the President, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, with the Supervisor, Gilberto Echeverria. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ring tied all from the state of New York, Alan Nace, Tony Paolillo, and Waleska Roldan. Our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Benji Estevez. All right, fans, here we go with the co-main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, joining us from Cork, Ireland. He weighed in at a ready 159 pounds with a record of 31 wins, four losses. He has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making his first attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the determined WBA number 10 ranked world contender. Introducing Gary Spike O'Sullivan. <laughs> And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, the defending world champion, wearing bronze trunks with tan and black trim. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba, he weighed in at 159 and three quarter pounds. With a record of 28 wins, three losses, and three draws, he has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his 12th world title appearance, Ladies and gentlemen, here's the two-time super welterweight world champion and the current defending WBA middleweight champion of the world, introducing Edis Lundy, the American Dream, Lara. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Benji Estevez. A second, Jim. I'm going to repeat my instructions, but repetir mis instrucciones. I want a clean fight, quiero una pelea limpia, obey my commands at all times, obedece mis instrucciones todo el tiempo, protect yourself at all times. Protejese y una pelea todo el tiempo. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. So here we go, first round of this championship fight. Eris Lundy Lara has been around, as we said, for a long, long time, taking on Spike O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan with not only an old-fashioned look, but kind of an old-fashioned style. Yeah, and the way he fights with the hands up. You know, he hasn't fought a lefty O'Sullivan since 2013 when he lost to Billy Joe Saunders. But along with Rolly Romero making some noise with his prediction, Spike O'Sullivan said to the press several times, I'm going to be the first man to knock out Eris Landy Laura. We'll see. Well, you know, <laughs> Laura just started landing a really good jab. Um, hey, I'm only, I'm only the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, but Lara, uh, there it is. Lara is just a sharp shooter. He's a really good, um, well, you know, place type of fighter. And like we talked about, look, he, he's placed right in the center right now. He's not moving like he usually moves. Yeah. Well, Ismail Salas, who's trained him for the last four fights, uh, said that they, he wants Lara at this older age to set down his punches, and he certainly did that in his last fight where he knocked out Thomas Lamana in the first round. Yeah, but even then, he's still really uh, defensively responsible yeah. when, when he sits down and, and, and throws power punches like he does right there. Yeah, those are all very effective punches. And, you know, he's, he may not be as quick on his feet, but he's as quick with his hands. Yeah. I think this is going to be an entertaining matchup. And there's O'Sullivan landing the hook. If you're going to beat Arislandi Lara, you have to land the hook. He's been knocked down three times in his career, twice by Alfredo Angulo, another time by Jared Hurd, and they all did it with left hooks. And Brian Castagna was able to land that punch. You have to throw it.
Mm. So Great Lara, he did, but he did get there with a <laughs> He left tried hand. with the hook. <laughs> now, and you're right. I mean, if you see a guy going down with those, with that type of punch, you know, not constantly, but with, against yeah. those fighters, well, of course you're going to try to do the same. But it's it, you know, it's easier said than done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lara is yeah. a really but slick fighter. To give yourself a chance, you've mm -hmm. got to get in position to throw that punch. Laura really crafty, just knows it all in there. Well, O'Sullivan is cranking up those hooks, so he, he, he knows exactly what he's got to try to do anyway. You know, whether mm -hmm. it can be effective is another question. Watch your hands. Yeah. And this is the new Lara. He's in front of you. Yeah, and very happily so, it seems. Yeah. He was just head to head with O'Sullivan. Good shot to the body. Yeah, it seems like he's comfortable in there because O'Sullivan really not throwing much as well. We'll take a look at what these men need to do to try oh and win this fight. That's Uzmir Salas, the uh, trainer of Lara with him. Stay off the ropes. Yeah, he's done that. And he's now in the center of the ring where he's uh, battling away. But I think he should use some movement in this fight. O'Sullivan's had trouble with lateral movement. And the straight left hand. He's got a terrific left, straight left. That's what knocked Lamana down. And he hopes to use it tonight against O'Sullivan. For Spike O'Sullivan with Packy Collins giving him instructions, keep your head down. He sometimes keeps his head way up and he can be hit. The double left hook, he tried that two or three times in round number one. As I said, that's the punch you want. And be busy. He only threw 20 punches in round one. At his best, O'Sullivan can throw 60 or 70. So we'll see how that plays out now as we move into the second round. We're going 12, remember. Yeah, you want to make Lara get back on his bicycle and get him tired yeah. by being busy. Yes. And you know, uh, O'Sullivan, when he gets steps up in class, Watch is when his punch numbers go down. Against the lesser fighters, he's very busy. Against the really good fighters, not so much. Yeah, and it's uh, he's actually beaten some very good fighters. Yeah. He hit Quigley, knocked him out. Remember yep. Antoine Davis, who was a rising yes. American fighter. Uh, he stopped him in the fourth yes. round. So he's gotten some quality wins. It's just when he takes that quantum leap that he can't finish the job. Now he just ate a nice uppercut on Sullivan. Yeah, and when we've seen uh, Arisandi Lara, going all the way back to when he fought Jared Hurd, uh, even though that he ended up losing that fight, it was a fight of the year. And in these fights where he's in pitch battles, he does well. It's not like he doesn't do well. He, you know, he can stand there and battle with the best of them. Yeah. And mo in most cases, he does that once he, you know, once he's tired, he's not boxing as much, and he sits down on his punches, and, and like you said, he does really well. But if you you are O'Sullivan, you want to keep him busy as much as you yes. can. And so O'Sullivan not doing a lot here. He's kind of walking to Lara. He's letting Lara be first. And even though you sense he doesn't want to be in the corner, Lara is doing a good job of counterpunching off those yeah. ropes. Yeah. And, and we've seen that in other fights. And already a little reddening on the face of O'Sullivan. Yeah, already yeah, marked Michael. up with some uppercut by Lara. Lara's a smart fighter. I think he's going to start countering. Well, he is. He has been. But a lot more, especially when he throw punches like O'Sullivan is doing right now and missing. And, and a lot of them are just pushing kinds of punches. Give him Good up. body shot from Sullivan, but he, from Sullivan rather, but he takes three shots in return from Lara. Lara pretty much having his way right now. Now Sullivan could tend to work the body here early in this fight. Yeah, good body work from a Sullivan right there seconds ago. I would like to see an uppercut right after that, those body shots. He keeps missing with that hook. He's got to be careful. Ten seconds, 10 seconds. 
straight left hand from Laura. That's been there for him. Ah. Well, a heartwarming story involving Javante Davis. 16-year-old amateur boxer Jessalyn Silva met her favorite fighter, Tank Davis, at a workout this week. Now, she was pointing towards fighting in the 2024 Olympics, but was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor in 2021. That, of course, derailed her dream. She emulated Tank's style when she fought, and meeting him was a very special day for her, to be sure. It's something that she said she will never forget. And she is in attendance here this evening to root on her favorite fighter. There she is. Good for you, young lady. Still throwing a few punches, too. You bet. And Tank was very, very gracious. Yes, indeed. Also. Yeah, they had a wonderful afternoon together. We come to round three. O'Sullivan continued to try to work the body, maybe try to soften Lara up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more aggression from O'Sullivan, but I just, I see him a little too slow. He's Sack missing a lot. And O'Sullivan only throwing 68 punches in two rounds. Uh, that is not going to get the job done for him. And when he throws that left hook to the body, he's got to come up with it to the head mm -hmm. as well. And, and in fact, Lara right now is countering to the body, and he's getting the better of Keep it. Him up. Yeah, he's pushing those punches a little bit. O'Sullivan. Oh. Good left hand right there. That backed O'Sullivan up. And the difference, Lara fought this exact same way against Brian Castaño, for instance, who, of course, we just saw in a great fight against uh, Jamel Charlo, a losing effort. But Ch Castaño is a different animal. He's a top 154 pounder who's able to get on the inside and have a high work rate. And O'Sullivan's not able to do that. That's exactly it, a, a, a much higher work yeah. rate. He won't let your punches go if you're O'Sullivan, but again, I, th I think it's a little bit too, he's worried about that counter punching right there, that maybe he's not letting his hands go as much. Three, three punch combination again from Lara. Lara pretty much doing what he wants. And Sullivan not really having any effect on him thus far. And you know, Lara lands 45% of, uh, of all his power punches uh, which puts him very high, 10th among all the fighters that uh, Showstats tracks. And nice. you see why, and tonight he's landing 49%, which is everything other than the jab. Yeah, three-punch combination a moment ago. Oh, that's very good right hand started it. Mm. I mean, he's able to wind up that uh, uppercut from way back. <laughs> now, that left hook got in for Watch O'Sullivan, but, you know, didn't have a huge impact on, on Laura. Yeah, I see a lot of pushing those punches from O'Sullivan. You know, O'Sullivan can land the left to the body anytime he wants, but it just isn't enough to, to, to maybe win him rounds if he can't land a lot of them. Since he's not coming up with any, there it is. I mean, if you don't come up yeah. with, with any punch after you throw your body, body punches, yeah. you're only making yourself open. Yeah, exactly. This is the most competitive round O'Sullivan has had in the fight, even though Lara's still doing a very good job and landed power punches and now pushing O'Sullivan back. And once that starts happening in this fight, it's going to be a problem for O'Sullivan. Yeah, I think it's already a problem. Yes. Oh. O'Sullivan also taking a step back, taking a deep breath as well. Ah. Well, the celebrities, the A-listers, are starting to make their way to the ring here. There's the great Earl Spence. We saw him just a few weeks ago in a great performance. Ryan Garcia. <laughs> Social media star, not a boxing star quite yet. Not popular with this crowd, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Danny Garcia, of course, former two-division world champion. Had a lot of fights in this arena. There's Gary Russell Jr. Of course, he lost his father. We mentioned that just a few minutes ago. He's in attendance here tonight. Lance Stevenson, guard of the Indiana Pacers. And Michael
Michael Strahan, who seems to be everywhere. Yeah, both on TV and off it, and uh, he's a big boxing fan. And here's a guy, you know, Tracy Morgan gets a big ovation from Saturday Night Live. Meanwhile, back to the action here. We're in round four. Fight that thus far has been pretty much dominated by Arislandi Lara. And Tracy Morgan on my favorite 30 Rock. Love that show. Yeah. The one thing that I'm really impressed from this fight right now is, yes, O'Sullivan's face is all marked up, but his, his mustache is it's <laughs> perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, it's it move. is. Oh, wow. my God. You know what? The, Abner, you've been doing these shows for a while. Perhaps your most salient best commentary ever. <laughs> With all your boxing knowledge, that's your best comment ever. Oh, man. Good left hand again from Lara. Lara starting to bust up. O'Sullivan a little bit. Blood from, I believe it's from the nose of O'Sullivan. You know, Bob Santos, the co-manager of uh, Lara, who's been with him for all these years. Good left hand right there. Talked about the brilliance of Lara. And, you know, he saw him for many uh, years sparring against the Jamel and Jamal Charlo. And he said, you know, he he taught them in the in those sparring sessions. They, they got better as fighters by fighting Arislandi Lara. I could see that. Yeah, and 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 uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and all of O'Sullivan's punches are being caught on the arms. And one thing's getting older, and Gino just hanging up the gloves. But nothing's okay, getting okay. older, and just perfecting your craft. Yeah, yeah. Work with what you got. You know, Laura is doing just that. I'm older. I can't box. I can't use the whole ring. I'm, you know, but still, you know, really responsible as a defensive fighter while he's there. And you talked about it, Al. He, he's, a, he's a really good fighter in the inside. Yeah, we saw the change in the Jared Hurd fight. And since then, for, except for one fight, he's been that way. And he had the draw with Castaño and the loss to Hurd in great fights. Uh, and other than that, has been successful. And even in those fights, fought very well. Well, O'Sullivan is trying, but with yes. very little success. Yeah, now he's smothering his punches as well. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's that hook. He landed nice. O'Sullivan. And Lara, Lara's now at the point where he's landing over half of these power punches. The not jabs. Oh, oh, my. There, and he drops O'Sullivan. The left hand started at the right hand, finished him. Over here. Watch it out. Very wobbly is O'Sullivan. Lara right back on top of the left hand short at the bell. Sound, 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 sound. I'm okay. I know you're okay. Okay, sound. You're doing great, son. You're doing great. Okay. All right. Where am I? You guys have uh, Okay. Now, was it a, a shotgun punch or did he hold it? Are you okay? okay? Give me the grease. Give me the grease. Take a big son. Okay. Okay. This is where Lara turned on the power. It's a straight left hand. And that's the kind of punch that knocked out Lamana. As we said, coming into this fight, that was going to be his big power punch in this. And he landed a beauty against Spike O'Sullivan, who not only did a somersault, he got up from that. Good for him for getting up. I Just a, a perfect nine, five. Left. Yeah, perfect left hand by Lara. And the only good thing for O'Sullivan was it came right at the end of the round. Let's see if Lara tries to jump on him right away here. That was Packy Collins, the brother's former middleweight and super middleweight uh, champion, Steve Collins, in the corner with O'Sullivan, hoping his man can squeeze out some more rounds here. Yeah, one thing about Lara, even, you know, in this fight's early fights, he would hurt someone, and he, he's not the aggressive one. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right about that. He just lets it happen. Yes. <laughs> it's a, a, a fight is a flowing river to him. <laughs> but really, in, in this type of fight, you kind of sense that it's yeah. going to happen. He's, he's going to find that opening. Right. And he probably has the idea that Sullivan's power has not bothered him in this fight. Be very, very patient here. 
Well, he's fought nine current or former world champions, Lara, and he's got a 4-3-2 record, but that could be easily be different. He could have a few more wins in that, as he's been in against the best. I think that straight left hand, again, got O'Sullivan's attention. Did I say you could fight for five more years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, I was just exaggerating that. But I can see him fighting, you know, especially if, if he gets these type of fights, you know, where, well, again, you know, it's, it's the fighter. It's Lara who's making this fight easy for him. Hey, I think Bernard Hopkins fought through was about 52, so. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good sharp left hand. O'Sullivan's still right there, though. Yeah, he took that left hand. That was actually kind of amazing. Oh, wow. Right hand left behind. So selling it up again. Lara still being very patient. Left hand again. Sullivan not taking a step back, even no, though he's eating these amazing. punches. Absolutely game. He's trying, and he always has. And the interesting thing is, and you point out, Abner, Lara, even when he gets in trouble, he's still going to wait and counterpunch. He's not going to walk to him. Just laying in on the ropes now. Osama's really not doing much. And that's what I'm talking about, protecting your craft from Lara. He's really just picking his shots, waiting for a right punch, right moment. And it's that punch that's going to make the difference. And it has for Lara. Mm. Left hand again. Good, clean, sharp left hand. Then the right hand comes up and short, short right hand. And O'Sullivan's still there. You know what's fascinating? It's yeah, like O'Sullivan's putting together some nice combinations here, just like getting yeah. through. There's the left hand, drives O'Sullivan into the ropes. And O'Sullivan fights off the ropes. Absolutely game. Wow. <laughs> This is me. Five rounds gone. This is why you dig deep. His mouth is wide open. Give him a tell. It's not right. open. His mouth is wide open, right? You gonna... Well, that was a fascinating round. Of course, Lara had some big moments. Landing this right hook, and that was early in the round, and that really stunned O'Sullivan. And you see, almost, almost went down there, and then also got his leg tangled up. But o O'Sullivan, at the end of that round, I mean, he was taking big shots uh, and throwing in return as well. He, you know, he was just, he's tough as you can get. And, and there was a point, that was the left hook. I was gonna say, there was one left hook that he landed that was a heck of a punch. And Lara took it, of course, very well. Yeah. So round six. Going Sullivan, back to work. No Sullivan down in round four, and Lara being very patient. And it's probably taken O'Sullivan's best. Yeah, now that last left hook that O'Sullivan threw was definitely his best shot. I mean, he landed a beauty. And Laura did at least stop for a moment, but I don't think it hurt him. But it, it at least got his attention. And even now, O'Sullivan landed some nice uppercuts and body work. <laughs> this, either, you know, it, these punches woke up O'Sullivan or, or he's, he's just going to walk into something. He's got to be careful, but he, well, yeah, he's, well, still, he's still game. He's still throwing his punches. Absolutely. He took a left hand and backed him off, but he's right back at it. Well, the other thing is he's safe when he's literally right on the, the chest of Lara. He's safer than when he has that just slight distance. Then Lara can really get him. again from Lara and that backs O'Sullivan up once more. And we're probably going to see more uppercuts from Lara at this range. Uh, uh, there, there it was. was. Right on cue. Uh, uh. <laughs> now a left hand backs him up again. Yeah, especially if you have O'Sullivan right in front of you. Yeah. Around your chest. He, a little short with that right hand. He was there for it. The interesting thing is O'Sullivan's trying to uppercut as well and hasn't been able to get that punch home. Smart Lara now taking that step back. Yeah. Straight left hand. And some jabs from Lara. He hasn't been in position to throw many jabs because they've been fighting at close range. 
This is one of the first rounds in which O'Sullivan has thrown more punches than Lara. Straight left hand again from Lara. First with the big left hand, though. Body shot from O'Sullivan. The way to do well against Arislandi Lara is start with that hook to the body and then bring it to the head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, the, the elite fighters have been able to do that against him. Well, Sullivan trying, but he landed a nice yeah. little uppercut. Yeah, there. he did. Oh, my, another one. Yeah, even when he, when he works the body and he comes up with them uppercuts, he's really, uh, he's really effective. Well, he threw Lara back into the ropes that time. Now Lara with a right hand and a left behind that. You get the feeling if Lara would come forward, he could just completely end this fight, and yet, apparently not that easy, because he's not able to. Time second, yes, I go I'll push. Time. Fight. Yeah, digging down deep in there. It's gonna show. What's the second half of the fun? It's pill. It's fun. 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 Pecky Collins, very enthusiastic in the corner. And part of the reason is because O'Sullivan was able to get some shots in in that last round. It was actually a fairly close round, even though Lara's power was certainly uh, a little bit more dominant. But it might be a round O'Sullivan might even have won. And he landed some good shots when he's on the ropes. Now, Lara's come into this fight off his longest layoff, a 12-month layoff, although it certainly didn't affect him at the beginning of this fight. It's now round seven. Only knockdown came in round four. Long elbow, long huge elbow. Ah. O'Sullivan had seven weeks to train for this fight. That's when they found out about it. And they trained in Ireland in uh, Packy Collins' gym there, and then came to America before the fight. Seven weeks, you think that's good? I think that's, yeah, that's, that's it's solid. actually enough time, yeah. yeah. Steve Farhood is with us. Steve, uh, I think I know how you're seeing this fight, but lay it on us. Well, I don't want to disappoint you, Barry. <laughs> you're you know, not, you're for not. a large portion of Lara's career, he was a nightmare for judges to score because of all the movement. Canelo fight, a prime example. Not the case yeah. tonight. He's winning this fight easily. I actually gave O'Sullivan the last round. I thought he did enough work and didn't get hit that much. Otherwise, it's been all Lara. I have him 59-50. All right, thanks very much, Steve. This is round seven. We're going 12. And that's a really well point that Steve says because back when I used to watch him, I would yeah. think if only he would sit a little bit more on his punches and let his hands go, you know, he would be a lot more of a complete fighter. And in one of the decisions he did not get, which was very close against Canelo Alvarez, yeah. most everyone we did, he had that fight, we did that fight on Showtime. You know, people felt if he had just done a little more, might well have won that decision. And some people thought he did win, but uh, yeah, as, as you said, Abner, it's frust it was frustrating sometimes. Well, Lara is 6-3-1 and one in 12 rounders. Spike O'Sullivan is 1-1 one one in 12 rounders. We still have a ways to go before we think of that, but... And O'Sullivan is still getting yeah. home. Yeah. And he's landing some punches. Yes, he is. This is another good round for O'Sullivan. Yes. yes. Now, Lara not backing himself against the ropes now. Does that mean he's going to stand and push him back? Yeah, Lara is standing right in the center of the ring, but he, he, there, there it is. He's not doing much of that anymore, no. which is the counter punch, and which was keeping O'Sullivan, you know, at bay. He needs to get back in that. Get off his head, get off his head. Could there be a tad of fatigue showing up here in Lara? I, I was going to say that, Barry, you know, it, he might be getting a little bit tired. I, I, you know, of course, one punch could change that. He's certainly hurt O'Sullivan before, but... But he's not throwing as many punches and uh, not setting down on his punches as much as he did. Ten seconds. Yes, I will. This is another effective round, I yeah, think, for pretty close. Pretty close. 
There's a good left hand that hurt him. And now he moves for the kill and he's still standing at the bell. Okay, fuck your hands on fuck your eyes. Blow your swords a long time for you, okay? You won't be able to knock him fucking out. You're having a hard round, right? You're having a hard round for two rounds. Okay, come through this round. All right. Give us one big round. Look, now push it back, Spike. You got the hands going. This is a one time for you. Well, in a round in which O'Sullivan was doing fairly well, it was a close round. This changed it again. The straight left hand of Lara, and that one really had a big impact. And like when in one in the other round where he was knocked down right at the end of the round this punch hurt him with only seconds remaining had there been a little more time it's possible Lara could have finished this fight the straight left I mean Lara has a really good straight left and as we said in the last time. several years it's been a big weapon for him now that he's power punching more and I have a momentary pause while the doctor takes a look yeah who's winning, who's winning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, either the referee or the doctor could stop the fight. The doctor looked at him, said he's okay. That's the rule here in the state of New York. And I think that left hand in the last round is hurt yeah. O'Sullivan a lot more than that first knockdown. I agree. So? Oh. And there's another good shot. That backs O'Sullivan up, and that's it. Benji Estevez steps in and says, enough. We're all stopped, I think. Yeah, no complaints from us, Sullivan, and that was appropriate. He's going to Salas celebrating with his fighter and, and uh, a yeah, game he, effort by Spike. His body right. language uh, seconds, when he got away. hurt in the last round, it, it said something. Yeah. Even when he got to the corner, I think he said something to his uh, corner or something about the eye. He said, forget about that. <laughs> but uh, clearly he was, uh, he was hurt. Well, he was absolutely game. I mean, he came here with the idea of winning this fight and did everything he could. The new Arislandi Lara at this age is a counter-punching power puncher. Yeah. And depending on the level of opposition he's facing can be very effective with that the question will be if he's facing a big middleweight how will he do and so Michael Sullivan uh, leaves this arena this may be his last opportunity in a major fight if it is he covered himself in glory with his toughness yes he did every part of him is bruised and battered except for the mustache mm -hmm. but he was absolutely game Packy Collins with him, and you can see Packy Collins proud of his man's effort. Yeah, as he should be. Yeah, you can see in the sense the disappointment, you know, uh, I think his okay. body will probably will want it to let him, to let his hands go more. Let's take a look at the stoppage in this fight. Uh, O'Sullivan, as Abner aptly pointed out, had not really gotten past the other left hand in the previous round that hurt him. And then early in this round, Lara did it. And this time, different posture for Lara, right? Came forward and said, okay, it's time for me to try to end this fight. Benji Estevez beat him to the punch and uh, said no. And no complaint from Spike O'Sullivan. He, he understood, and I think his corner understood. He would have only taken a lot of punishment that would not have been warranted at this point. And how about he didn't go down? That's pretty amazing yeah, as well. Yeah, it is amazing. And, you know, you could, that's the case where you can make a case for taking a knee, but yeah. in this instance, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Uh, very doubtful he could have come back and correct stoppage. And uh, Arislandi Lara, at age 39, shows us plenty of pop in his punch. Uh, and uh, this new look for him continues to be effective. And for Spike O'Sullivan, several times in this fight, we thought, it might end like this, and then uh, this time it did. Yeah, I mean, Lara did what he needed to do, and O'Sullivan, as we said, was absolutely game. He did everything that he came here to do except win the fight.
So his record now runs to 29, three and three. He's a guy who came to the United States. Quick look at show stats, and uh, it shows you landing 54% of his power punch is higher than even his normal rate. That's everything other than the jab. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know in this fight, and so many of those meaningful power punches. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. 23 seconds in round number eight. A referee in charge, Benji Estevez, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Eris Lundy, the American Dream Lotta. Let's go to Jim Gray with the winner, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Barry. Here is Lundy, congratulations on your fight. How comfortable were you with the guy that just he just took a lot of punishment and kept coming. What about the bravery of his style and what it forced you to do with your new style and new look? Felicidades primero, Lindandi, y antes de todo, esa presión que mantuvo, o sea, era un boxeador difícil para ti. ¿Y qué te hizo que este nuevo estilo de boxeo que tú tienes ahora o demuestra? Bueno, y ahora en este estilo de boxeo ya ya le, ya le quiero enseñar al mundo, le enseñar a todo tipo de boxeadores que soy un boxeador que me adapto a cualquier tipo de boxeador y creo que este boxeador fue perfecto para, para mi estilo. Yeah, now this new style that I'm demonstrating is to tell all the boxers the way that I can fight now with this new style with, you know, just interchanging. He was a tough boxer too. Our colleague Abner Mari said something really interesting. He says, you just let it happen. How are you so patient to let a fight just happen? Abner dijo, eh, el nuestro colega, que tú dejas que la pelea eh, pase así y después entonces le pone la presión necesaria. No, yo, yo solamente trato de hacer la cosa bien, de conectar los golpes claros, bien severos y que no me golpeen a mí. Soy un boxeador demasiado y difícil, y curridizo y creo que eso fue lo que hice esta noche. I'm a smart boxer, a slick boxer. That's what I did tonight. I uh, wait till, you know, he attacks or whatever and then do what, the, what I have to do to win the fight. Here is Landy, let's take a look at the monitor and tell us here in the fourth round when you knocked him down for the first time with your left hand from your vantage point. Si no puede explicar que pasó aquí que lo noqueaste con la izquierda. Solamente que lo vi descubierto, estaba trabajando la defensa, solamente vi el hueco y lo pude conectar fácilmente. Yeah, I saw the opening right here. He was leaving himself wide open and that's when the left came in and knocked him down. And now we go to the end of the fight here uh, in the eighth round and uh, you were in total control. Estaba controlando totalmente la pelea en octavo asalto. Ya vi, ya vi que no tenía ningún tipo de poder, solamente estaba tirando golpes innecesarios, no tenía ningún tipo de poder y pude conectarlo lo mejor fuerte, lo mejor golpe mío más fuerte, más fuerte. Yeah, no, I saw at the eighth round that he had no more power and that's when I stepped it up a little bit with my power, the one I showed tonight. Everybody always looks forward. What are you looking forward to? What's next? ¿Qué es lo próximo para Irlanda y Lara? Bueno, espero para mí ahora la pelea grande, la pelea buena que mi Ajemón, el Luis Cuba Junior, mi manager y mi equipo de trabajo buscarían para mí este año. Y quiero darle las gracias a Brooklyn por darme la oportunidad y a Pepe Vivo y a Ajemón por estar aquí presente esta noche. I definitely want to thank the crowd here at the fans that came out to Brooklyn to see me fight. And then Al Heyman, Cuba Junior, everybody, you know, to set up the big fight that I want this year for me. Congratulations, 39 years of age, terrific performance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, I'm still in full force. <laughs> Indeed you are.